Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I'm reading today for water signs. So we've got Pisces in the room, Cancer and Scorpios. Um, if you've got these placements as well, if you've got strong uh, water sign placements in your chart, you may also find that this resonates. It's a general reading, it's not a personal reading, so some things may resonate, some things may not. Just leave what doesn't and take what does and use your own intuition to guide you as always. And you have brilliant intuition, water signs and water sign placements, so you should be fine. Um, I have got some like deep ocean noises going on in the background but it's quite subtle I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not uh, it has this feeling of like being in the womb it's got like kind of like ultrasound kind of quality to it um and you do feel like you're doing this deep dive like this kind of like the fool's leap right the fool's leap of, of faith right back into your emotions like this kind of like it's almost like you know the trust exercise where you fall back and somebody catches you but you're falling back into your own emotions so there could be something there about um like catching yourself emotionally when you fall or or trusting trusting your own intuition trusting your own uh deep inner knowing trusting your own uh psyche and just emotional intelligence to catch you when times are hard right or when there's a change or a new start because you've also got the death and rebirth card here Oh, and that's really nice as well. You've got the, the six of wands, which is like success. So I feel like if you're going through some kind of tra change or transition period in your life, um, I feel like, you know, taking a leap of faith towards something and away from something else, um, I feel like you're going into a new phase that is going to be successful or the change itself is going to be successful. So that's good to know, right? Obviously, don't do anything too foolish. Um, you know, we want you to stick around, you know, water signs if, if that's if you're following me there um yeah do get help if you need help right if you're if you're uh I mean this is telling me that you are able to catch yourself when you fall right you are able to dig deep into those emotions and sort things out internally and get back up on your own two feet right um and not be codependent but that doesn't mean that you can't ask for help okay if you know right you know if you think this is getting really overwhelming um i am getting some stuff about being in over your head like the water being over your head which tells me that somebody could be feeling very emotionally overwhelmed right now so do reach out to friends family doctors mental health services helplines you know, whatever is available to you to access if you need to do that. But it feels, for most of you, it feels quite positive. Now, some of you could have very, very strong feelings about a person because the lover's card is also peeking through here. And yeah, I'm using uh, kind of, um, what, what can I say, like a, a, a favourite of, of my channel, which is the Tarot de Nui. I think this is quite a popular deck uh, and it's beautiful. It, it really does give me that water sign energy. So the lover's card, which is such a gorgeous depiction there of the lover's card it's like this is Pisces this is Scorpio right <laughs> um so I don't know like having strong feelings for somebody being a little bit infatuated perhaps with somebody uh but it's like this connection brings you happiness this is what this is what I always say if you've got a choice to make and it's a, a a choice about partnership in some kind of way it doesn't have to be romantic um it could be like um two friends have asked me out who do I spend the time with you know it's like well it's not hard to know who makes you happy, who lights you up from the inside, who who makes your who makes your burdens lighter, who because it's like when you get off the phone, so imagine that you're talking to two different people. Like you've been on the phone to them, you hang up, are you smiling? Are you frowning? Right? It's not hard to know who brings out the best in you, who brings out the the positive feelings, who makes you feel confident and proud and gorgeous and all those kind of things. You may have to be very, very patient, though, to connect with somebody uh, on that deep, deep soul level. Um, what else do I have? So um, I'm getting a lot of stuff about... Um, I'll kind of run through what I've been getting. So the song... Um, it's like Papa Americano, um, which is from the Inbetweeners movie. So I don't know, the Inbetweeners movie could be something for somebody. Maybe you're going on vacation. Maybe you're trying to impress somebody with your dance moves. I am getting this kind of like Valentino 1920s dance thing going on as well. Um, like the seductive dance. <laughs> and kind of like old film as well old film seems to be coming through and this kind of historical element in my readings at the moment so um yeah it's like e2 americano or it's i don't speak any i don't speak american right um and again the if you watch the music video to that 
to that song. Um, it's kind of like a black and white 1920s or something, 1940s maybe, that kind of Charlie Chaplin style uh, movie. Um, so movies, again, is coming through. Uh, Air Signs got quite a bit of this. Um, also old movies, old tape, which again, Air Signs were getting, uh, could apply to somebody. Maybe somebody just really enjoys old movies. Like maybe it's very romantic to sit down and watch like an old like French movie together, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and not understand the language. So there's something about like not understanding the language necessarily, or there being language barriers or cultural differences uh, where perhaps you and somebody else and this could be on a big level this could be like you and your soulmate are from different cultures so you've got to get used to each other's language how you use language in different ways this has come up for me on twitter as well with like yesterday it came through with uh, like torch and flashlight it was so funny because i was already talking about it um like how uh, in the uk we call you know like a, a, a torch that you hold like this like you'd seen like um I don't know, like a scary movie way, kind of like walking through the woods, like we call that a torch. Um, but in like America, it's a flashlight, right? When we don't really say flashlight in England. Um, so it's funny that that came out yesterday and it's like here in the reading. And just other things as well, you know, all these like little things that could trip you up. Like <laughs> they're showing me what in the UK we call bum bags and what Americans call fanny packs and fanny is a funnier word in the in English than it is in American so I don't know it's like cultural and language differences that could um yeah it's funny as well because um yeah okay I, I they show me a lot of different stuff sorry I'm getting a lot through quickly um yesterday and I didn't put it in the song list but Blurred Lines by Rob Robin Thicke came through for Air Signs and I was like do you know it's a very controversial song I was like and I don't see how it fits in with their reading I'm just gonna kind of put it to one side and not put it in the song list and it's that kind of energy again like blurred lines it's like is there miscommunication here are we saying the same thing or are some of the words that we're using having different meanings so it's making me think of the term because I've mentioned the in-betweeners right um there's a scene in that in the in-betweeners the british in-betweeners tv show where uh, they call people bus wankers now what they mean by this wankers is a real sorry swear warning right um it, in the uk you might say wanker to mean uh, like oh that guy's an idiot um so it doesn't necessarily mean masturbation right but uh in the us they use that term just for masturbation so i'm sorry i'm talking about this because this is kind of an example of the kind of miscommunication that you may be experiencing if with somebody from a different background culture language uh socio-economic status right so in the in-betweeners they, they shout to people bus wanker so I, I tweet sometimes i'm like oh a bus wanker if i'm getting the bus and i just mean i'm getting the bus and i've had like american friends being like what are you doing on the bus <laughs> so it's that kind of thing so yeah, um, just be wary of that. Just be wary of mixed signals, I think, um, and misunderstandings as well. Like don't fall out with somebody, um, you know, get clarification before you get angry, I think is the message there. They, you know, they may, they may just be saying something. Oh, it came out yesterday as well. What else was I talking about? Um, I was in the car with uh, my stepdad. Uh, stepdad? Yeah, stepdad. And... Uh, again, I get, I get stepdad and father-in-law mixed up, like the terms, I always use the wrong one. So again, misunderstandings, miscommunication, different words to what you mean. Um, and what was this saying? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I want to go off gallivanting. Um, and he was like, what do you mean gallivanting? And I was like, you know, gallivanting, adventuring, you know, like exploring. And he said, right, okay, because he, I'm from Manchester and he grew up in Liverpool. He said, when we used to say that in Liverpool, it meant you were going out dating you know you were going out looking for somebody to spend the night with and I was like well no that's not what I mean I just mean adventuring and I googled it and I looked it up and it meant both things it was like what you know definition one is this definition two is this so again it's it's words can mean different things in different places cultures you know and even Liverpool which is you know down the road from here it has a different meaning so that's something to bear in mind also getting um so somebody could be from Sicily or Italy or America or England are all coming through quite, oh, and Africa as well, possibly, because I was getting this thing about like Britain and Italy being at war in um, like World War II and fighting in Africa, which I 
never remember. Like to me, when I think about World War Two, it's always like Britain and Germany and, you know, Germany and France and Poland. And I always forget, like, I don't know why I always think like England and Italy were on the same side when they really weren't. <laughs> I think it's because like culturally speaking, like England and Italy have had this like really long running history. Like there's so much there, you know, and a lot of it is positive and a lot of it is like this cultural sharing of art and things like this. Um, and like art and culture and religion and all these kind of like things that there's been a lot of interplay between those places and just generally in Europe, right? But Italy's coming through strongly and I'll kind of explain why in a minute. Um, yeah, and so it's like this little blip in history. I'm like, why did we fall out again? <laughs> like, obviously we fell out for big reasons, but uh, it's just, it's, I always forget. And I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. Um, so um, that's coming through, could be meaningful to somebody out there. Um, I, yeah, I got this song. It was the first song that came through for you, Papa Americano. Um, it randomised on Spotify. Uh, somebody else got it the other day. Yesterday, Air Signs got Americano by Lady Gaga. Um, so Americanos could be meaningful to somebody. And, uh... <laughs> Yes, you. Um, it's funny because uh, it's going to mean something to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, right? But if you're watching this, you know I'm talking about you, right? <laughs> My friend, she drinks Americanos. Um, but also I was watching Melina, um, like clips from this t uh, film, Melina, Melena, um, this morning as well. And um, that is set in Sicily during World War II. Um, and there could be something in that for somebody. It's... Um, the girl in this, this film, I've always wanted to watch it. I've never seen the full movie. I've just seen clips of it, but I kind of know the, the outline of it. Uh, this woman, uh, her husband's fighting in World War II um, and she's very, very beautiful and she's very vulnerable because there's a lot of men in her town um, and she's a woman on her own, right? And she, um, all the other women are jealous of her. So they won't, they won't give her nice food at the market, you know, they, they'll they only give her like the horrible rotten food and like they're just, she's finding it really difficult to get on. Um, and she's, she doesn't, you know, all the men want to sleep with her, but she's worried about her husband, right? She's, she's a loyal woman. Um, and she's trying to look after her elderly father. Um, and she gets herself into financial problems uh, and no one will help her, right? So the circumstances and uh, the social pressure and just lack of any other options, uh, she ends up um, falling into prostitution, which, um, you know, is is even further humiliating for her, right? She's... She, She's not only hated, she loses all her credibility and um, honour um, through that. She's ridiculed um, and, and treated really shamefully, right, by the whole town. Um, so I don't know, there's something about that again, uh, circumstances, economic circumstances and things like this. Coming through for somebody, uh, or all of you in different ways, right? So take it as it resonates. Some of you may just be in that position where you're like, I have been blessed with style and grace and beauty and uh, it creates problems around me because people think of me a certain way and I'm not that way, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you've also got Dizzy by Tommy Rowe. Rowe could mean something to you. I was getting that thing the other day about like frog spawn and fish eggs. I don't know, maybe some of you breed fish, especially with those kind of fish tank noises in the background. Uh, and dizzy like a whirlpool so it looks like she's falling back into a whirlpool so I think some of you when you get into your emotions you could um, when you explore your emotions about a certain person it could make you feel very overwhelmed and dizzy like um, I don't you know this is uh, these feelings are overwhelming for me um, it could also be that you, you make somebody feel this way uh, the first time that I saw you girl I knew that I just had to make you mine um so what else some of you are just worried like like worried about endings worried about losing people worried about uh death and loss and grief which is a common theme coming up in my readings at the moment um you got this is how to disappear by lana del rey the waves came over my head um and there's a message there about somebody not going anywhere so uh, even when even when people do pass through that portal i do believe that they continue, they're just in a different form, right? They've not gone anywhere. I just lost my cat <laughs> yesterday. And I was, this is my feelings about it. It's like, she's not, she's just changed form, right? She's just changed form. She's not left us, she's not gone anywhere. It's just harder to connect with her now because she's on a different plane, right? 
Um, so that could be a message for somebody. Um, I'm getting that some of you are trying to distract yourselves. Uh, you're really like in your feelings at this time. Uh, definitely in your feelings about again like this theme about life and death and endings keeps coming through i can't help it it's in the cards i'm gonna say it if it's there um and i think some of you just if you're feeling very emotionally overwhelmed you could have this urge to disconnect from the sources of anxiety and confusion so it's almost as though this thing's overwhelming me i am gonna ignore it and I'm going to go and focus on this thing over here. I'm going to distract myself, right? So just be wary about avoidance because I think some of you are getting like a emotional avoidance. Um, some of you may have uh, what's known as um, anxious avoidance um, attachment style. Anxious avoidance attachment style. So Google that and check that out more. I'm not diagnosing you. It's just coming up in your reading to as, as a discussion point for you to go and check that out. And, you know... If you don't know what that is, kind of uh, have a look at it, see if that fits you or if it doesn't fit you. Um, what else? Uh, others of you, um, you may be using substances uh, or it could even be meditation, you know, different means to disconnect from reality. Like, how do I get into a different headspace? How do I take myself out of this physical environment that's causing me stress and um get onto that other plane where I feel more settled, uh, you know, so uh, some of you, it could even be like, um, you know, sleeping tablets to help you sleep better, uh, it's like I just want to, I just want to knock myself out, you know, just be really, really re um, careful about medica over medicating and what you are actually ingesting and whether it's healthy and whether it's in healthy amounts. Right, okay, let's go. <clears throat> I'm actually just going to pause and drink some water. For those of you who don't know, I'm a bit poorly this week, I've got a bit of a cough and a cold and I'm not sleeping well, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to kind of reset myself and get ready, and we'll pull some cards for you on camera, back in a sec, water signs. Um, I don't know why this is coming through for you, uh, it could be that there's a cross watcher, or this is like different placements of yours, or you're dealing with these signs, but um, I was on Astrology Vibes, which is a Twitter account about astrology this morning, and I remember seeing a tweet, it's just kind of popped into my head, about um, just because of this Thing about um, getting overwhelmed and disconnecting. Um, there, there was something, but it was it was uh, Capricorn and Aquarius placements. I think it was. I'll have to I'll have to find a tweet again. But I think it was Capricorn and Aquarius placements, and it was saying, um, you know, sometimes they seem really like emotionally disconnected or like standoffish or cold, and it's not that really. It's just that they need a lot of uh, time and space to kind of like work through the feelings don't know why that's come up but it has so that could mean something uh right okay water sign placements please water sign placements please what do we have for my water signs what's going on yeah look at that exactly just is this is this all over um transitions changes transitions um transmutation metamorphosis changing forms now um it doesn't have to be death right it doesn't have to be death um it's it's a significant and a pro profound ending or change so um this could come for example when you have a bit of an emotional epiphany it's like you realize something about yourself about your patterns of behavior about the way that you attached to people you think oh my goodness I've just realized that I do this because of this thing that happened in my past and it's like it's like it breaks the cycle it breaks the chain right it's like this just big awakening epiphany moment where it's like oh my goodness I'm not going to do that anymore because I recognize that that's a pattern of behavior because of this this and this it breaks you out of the cycle you see it's not necessarily a big thing um it can also be for example um uh okay i've lost my job right fine um i'm gonna go and do this thing instead you know or they show me melena as well um she at one point in that film she she's got this like beautiful long brown hair she's very natural looking and at one point she kind of cuts it um into a bob and dyes it red it's like a big change so it could just be a new haircut right a new haircut um a new wardrobe a new way of carrying yourself it's a, it could be a lot of things it's going to be different for every single one of you watching uh yeah but i think you are being called embrace this change it's it will make you feel successful in some sort of way 
um obviously don't don't go throwing yourself off cliffs or anything like that again if you need to speak to someone speak to someone uh, but this feels more like um it does feel like it's quite flowing it does feel like it's quite I think you're required to trust. I feel like it's happening to you or for you, right? Um, I think you're required to trust in this process, whatever this is. Let's have a read of this. I think this came out, um, I'm attaching it to Libra a lot at the moment. It is a Gemini card for me because Gemini is is uh, the social butterfly, but uh, a butterfly landed on my stomach the other week and um, it came through in my own personal reading as well. Um, so I don't know, I've just kind of, I've got this thing about Libras and butterflies at the moment. So yeah. um, you may have Libra in your chart or Gemini. Undergoing great change and transformation. It is air, by the way, and air, uh, air energy. Undergoing great change and transformation. The energy of the butterfly is with us during periods of transition. Since air is the element of the heart. That's interesting. Because I always think, I always think of... Um, Air being the mind, because air is swords energy, right, in tarot. Uh, and cups energy is the heart. So that's a, an interesting change. Air is the element of the heart. But if when you do feel, when you do feel like, you know, your heart's full, when your heart's buoyant. So there's this thing now about buoyancy, like your heart and buoyancy. And, you know, okay. So the metaphor that's coming through with water and air at the moment, um, which is new for me. Uh, so again, they're throwing me a curveball. I'm running with it. Um, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes my guides make fun of me. Um, I'm getting told you don't run with the, you don't, you don't run with the ball. <laughs> I don't know. Baseball comes up sometimes in my readings and I don't play baseball. I've not played it since like school, but, um, this, so they're showing me someone like throwing a curveball, and obviously you're supposed to hit it. You're not meant to grab the ball and run with it. So I don't know. They've got, <laughs> I don't know if this is something somebody's kids doing. It's funny to me. Um, that completely distracted me. I don't know why that came through, but it's really distracted me. Right, buoyancy. Um, so um, water, which should be emotional energy, right? But the emotional energy for you is coming through with this overwhelm. Uh, like the water's coming in over my head. I'm overwhelmed by my emotions. Um, so it could be if some of you are getting a little bit down in the dorms a little bit depressive again reach out for help if you need to um it's like those connections that bring in the sunshine those connections that lift your heart those connections that 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 make you feel more buoyant and jubilous 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 ju joyful um yeah so they're literally showing me a boy um you know the um they sit in the water and they they kind of uh they map out areas for boats so the the boats know kind of which area they're in those kind of bright orange boys um and yes i am pronouncing that correctly there's this thing as well but they're both taking this leap of faith right um like they're both on this cliff edge in these two images from completely different decks um and she is transforming here as well right you see she's the red's coming away and she's coming through as clean and innocent and um like uh redeemed it always has this meaning of redemption like things coming to light and you know your reputation being redeemed things like that here it feels very good it feels very positive i don't know what this is but it feels very very positive so it feels uplifting at the same time as taking this deep dive right just read from the book since, the, since air is the element of the heart, this change usually involves relationships or if you love your job, perhaps your career. Since transition is accompanied by some amount of discomfort, be extra patient and kind during this time, especially if the butterfly is you. Let solid friends and activities support you like a cocoon. That's nice. Again, like your relationships, right? The people around you, your loved ones. Um, let them support you like a cocoon committing to one daily routine a meal practice or prayer done at the same place and time will do wonders for lifting a butterfly spirit so that could be helpful when in balance cheerful and graceful when out of balance fragile and fl uh, frustrated bring into balance a daily routine so if you are going through some time of transition at the moment it could be really helpful to just have a few small things that you do at the same time every day excuse me phone not right now um it could be just be confirmation right 
So it could be like, uh, okay, uh, my life is in flux right now. I'm going to make sure I brush my teeth, right? I'm going to commit to brushing my teeth every morning, every night. You know, something as simple as that. It could be, uh, do you know what? It's going to be helpful to me if I read a book before I fall asleep. It's going to be helpful for me to, um, you know, play a certain song every time, every time day when I get up or every day when I'm doing a certain activity I'm going to play a certain song it's going to get me in the mood uh that kind of thing so it's making me think of in work they, they play happy days in work and it's uh it torments me <laughs> um it's like the first song that, that they play on a Sunday morning. Like, I'm like, just give me my coffee before you play Happy, Happy Days. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not at that level of energy yet. I need a little bit more time to warm up. It's almost like uh, sarcastic or ironic, you know? <laughs> um, oh, the Emperor. Okay, you could be in conflict with uh, an Emperor at this time. Uh, so this could be, could be somebody else. So I'm going to kind of explain. Oh, look, the Empress as well. Right, okay, here we go. Emperor and Empress, so this could be uh, your, your mother and father in conflict, it could be uh, if you are the Emperor or Empress, it could be uh, somebody that you're attached to, so it could be a husband and wife, it could be business partners, it could be um, divine partner, you know, the Emperor and Empress are a pair, they are an equal match, um, if they're in alignment, it's really, really successful, right? If they're in alignment, if they're working together, if they're on the same page, brilliantly successful. If you have an emperor and an empress who are both in the upright, both good people, right? But they have different ideas, different opinions. You're going to get conflict, right? Uh, Five of Swords is, we're not on the same page here. I don't understand you. You don't understand me. We're not listening to each other. We're not understanding each other. Uh, what's going on here there's some conflict between them um, and that's that's what's happening perhaps that needs to change um, I was getting this thing about <clears throat> it's in my notes it's in my notes and I forgot to mention it um, this thing about um, misunderstandings so I've got misunderstandings cultural language socio-economic right so coming from two different backgrounds perhaps or coming from two different cultures and being like we're not in agreement here about these two different things. Um, but perhaps there is a, a romantic connection between the two of you, or perhaps there is a heart energy there. So even if you're not in a romantic relationship, it could be, uh, I recognize you as an, an equal. I recognize, you know, I respect you. I recognize you as an equal. I know that we could work well together here, but what's going on? What's, what's this five of swords doing here? Um, this person is coming across as very defensive. This person's coming across as very tired. <laughs> this does talk to me about the, um, she, she's, um, Venus energy, the Empress is Venus, so Taurus Libra energy doesn't have to be, um, but she, this particular Empress talks to me about also High Priestess energy, it's the, it's the sleeping Empress, so this, uh, sleeping beauty energy, it's talking to me about, um, this Empress has the High Priestess-like quality, which is Scorpio, of being able to access information in her dream space or when she's resting. So rest may be very important to this person. Uh, so it does speak to me about like when I go into meditation, right? When I um, when I go to sleep and I fall into, you know, the uh, the astral realms, right, um, or the subconscious, whatever you want to call that liminal space. So it's like she's accessing. She's resting because she's accessing uh, spiritual information, her higher self, you know, talking to God, whatever you want to put it, you know, what, however you want to take that as. Um, this emperor is coming through as shielding and he's, sometimes he's protecting something behind him, right? So if it came through this way, the emperor would be protecting the empress. It's like, get behind me, I'm going to protect you. But because it's this way around, um, he's defensive against her. He's holding the shield up and he's got his head turned away. So it's like he's, I don't know, it just feels like misunderstanding. You know, he's like, uh, she, she's going to attack me with a word, something like that. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. I'm turning away because she's just going to try and fight me. But she's, she's not in fighting mode, right? She's in resting mode. 
so right what's coming through now visually through the images so they've not they're looking away from each other there's conflict between them right they can't be in the same room perhaps because they'll fight so but what's happening is she's resting she's connecting to her higher self she's connecting to her intuition he's being spoken to by this moon energy which could be it's almost like maybe communication has been blocked right she can't talk to him directly he's turned away he's not listening but astrally you know or in the dream space or in uh, so this could be somebody perhaps this could be you know somebody could have passed over even uh, but it's like the the higher self in the the place beyond is going kind of almost like round the back and coming in with this it's like speaking to this person via the moon, like making me think of like Bruno Mars, right? I'm talking to the moon and and sending them information. So while it looks on the surface like this conflict between these two, um, she is actually getting through to him on a emotional level or an intuitive or psychic level. I want to say, and I want to say he is listening. He's looking back, he's listening. That's really interesting. I've never, ever seen the cards that way before, but it's coming through so strongly and it's in my notes. So I've wrote, um, even though, because swords can be words and communication, right? Uh, thoughts, words, communication, opinions. Um, even though there seems to be something wrong there, the feeling, so I've got feeling music and body language, like the emotions, the, the way that you move, um, they're giving me that something in the way she moves, which came through for somebody else the other day. I can't remember who though. Um, something in the way that you're moving. So it's like, you know, arguing, but your fingers touch, you know, and there's sparks or, um, it's, it's like, the attractions there. So as though two people were speaking a different language, but you can look into each other's eyes and see that you love each other. It's that kind of energy is coming through. Um, okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna keep all three of those cards out. Just kind of put them like that so they're not taking up too much space. There could even be somebody between you, right? There could even be somebody. Um, <laughs> um, I heard, I swear warning again, my guides are in a mood today. I heard somebody say shit stirring. So somebody could be shit stirring, which means if you, did, again, cultural words, language. If you don't know what that means, it's somebody who's causing trouble. So coming between you, causing trouble, like getting, you know, throwing it, stirring the pot, um, you know, saying he said, he said this, she said that. So it could even be an interpreter, right? Uh, these two people speak a different language. This is the, uh, the interpreter, but they're not interpreting clearly. They're, they're stirring things up. She said this about you. He said that about you. You know, and it's maybe, uh, there's something about intent as well, because if you say something and you say it as part of a paragraph, right? Um, and it's part of a bigger argument. Um, if you took one sentence out of that paragraph as a standalone thing out of the context, it could look really bad. Um, but it's not necessarily, but when you frame it in the context of the entire thing that that person said, you know, it may have a very, very different meaning. So just be really careful about things being taken out of context. At this time she said this about you yeah but what else did she say like why was she saying that what you know what was the point yeah that kind of thing um okay i'm hearing bite your tongue so don't uh if something if somebody says something or somebody comes to you and says this person said this or you know somebody says something don't in, in your impulse is a knee-jerk reaction just try and bite your tongue a little bit just try and resist that ask for more information because i think um i think there's definitely some sort of misunderstanding happening emotionally for my stop my uh water sign so pisces scorpio and cancer what's going on emotionally do i dare ask feels like a lot of love actually what's going on what's going on in sneaky secretive heart space look at this you yeah you're quite confused you are taking i feel like you are taking a deep dive but there's some confusion there you do have a choice to make and you're kind of figuring out figuring out your options there you may have a lot of options again that malena energy she's very desirable no you, you're kind of you're planning something kind of in student mode what else please emotionally for my water something
this is like this this is the thing coming in right this is this whatever this energy is it's like you see she's coming in with this uh it's almost like a stake it's almost like the sword but it's the stake um so she's coming into actually i feel like it's a third person but not necessarily um it could be the thing that you know one person says something to the other it's taken out of context because the page of air is like words or communication or a piece of information right a piece of information coming in you can see this feather floating down but in the reverse it's this is saying to me this is this is this right it's it's the thing that's been misunderstood or the thing that's been taken out of context which i think is making you feel very very unsure It's like somebody's got the wrong end of the stick, you know? Because the page is unsure. Pages are like, um, I don't know what to... I need to, I need to spend some time. I need to learn more. Um, it's the most naive, young energy. So I'm getting this energy of like, um, okay, I know that I need to plan here. I know that I need to plan. I know that I need to start figuring something out. I know I need to start applying myself in some sort of way um but i don't quite know i'm really confused because of either i don't have access to this information or it wasn't what i was expecting or um something's been taken out of context or it, it, whatever this is it's causing a lot of confusion which is making you feel really really unsure okay let's get a little bit more information please what's going on in the thoughts please for my water signs Oh, it's such cancerian energy it's always like thinking about for me it's always thinking about the past and it being painful it's like a uh, longing for something in the past it's my belly ache card it's like oh i feel sick when i think about that or oh i'm longing for that thing in the past so it's like nostalgia can also indicate children could be something about your younger self it's kind of almost like a child in the water um you know thinking about your past your children uh, when you were a child, the sun card, but you're getting some clarity. It's like looking back on happy feelings because they're kind of both looking back. So I want to say it's like thinking because it's not feeling, it's in your thoughts. Thinking about something that made you happy in the past or someone that made you happy in the past. Longing for something that happened in the past that made you happy. But also feeling confusion around something in the past. The two cards about children here. That's quite a lot. I'm going to look at it, but we're not going to take all three. The moon, the eight of fire. Yeah, exactly. This is it again. Because this is communication and action. Uh, somebody did something. Somebody said something. Um, it's quite fast. There's a, It's like rapid communication. Like, you know, when your phone pings and it's like it pings again and it pings again. Like information coming in. But it's deceptive because the moon's um, illusion um it's pisces energy um delusion or illusion or fear uh, or misunderstanding there's a lot of misunderstanding and communication coming through uh, it's because of this full energy again it's like immature um unexpected uh, somebody could have took a leap of faith to tell you something and you weren't expecting it so you took it the wrong way something like that um can i get one more I feel like this is something that you're looking back on. It could be. I'm getting that energy of like, um, yeah, I just, they gave it to me. I went, oh. <laughs> that's so funny. It's like, I feel what's going on for you, uh, water signs, is that um, something happened in the past. Somebody said something to you or you got some information or something happened. Something happened in the past and you misunderstood it at the time or it confused you at the time right it could be again like blurred lines like uh cultural differences language differences like someone says something to you you didn't understand it i want to say and it's been some time because the six of waters can be like quite a distant past so some time has passed and you're looking back on it and you've realized something it's like i don't know somebody somebody explains to you, you you took a word one way somebody explains you know suddenly completely by chance you realize that 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 word has different meanings and it's like oh wait i thought they were telling me this but they were actually telling me that and it's like this 
light bulb moment or, or this dawning moment because it's the sun card it's like the light is coming in like this this dawning realization of oh that's that's what it was right that's what actually happened or that's what actually was being said and I want to say it's positive right because so it could be at the time it could have been something actually hurtful it could have been something that caused conflict because you could have taken it the wrong way where actually it could have been that that person was saying or doing or um, bringing you something that was very very positive and uplifting and you you're going oh oh I understand that better now and it's lifting me up to understand it the right way is is bringing in this buoyancy but then almost like regret for that past so almost like um oh I wish I'd done something differently I wish I'd realized at the time I wish I'd I wish I'd seen the opportunity for what it was you know something like that right okay what's going on in the thoughts yeah no it, it was I feel like it was love I feel like it was love and you didn't realize right or um the Queen of Water, Cancerian energy. Uh, we've also got Leo here as well. Could be significant for somebody. This is Cancerian energy. Uh, oh, I should say the Emperor is Taurus Aries as well. So Taurus Aries with the Emperor. Uh, this Empress is uh, Taurus Libra. Could also be Scorpio. Um, Sun card is Leo. Queen of Water is Cancerian energy. Um, and this is a Cancerian card for me as well. So thinking, thinking... The Queen of Water is like um, really good, a really good card to come out for water signs because it's like all those emotions, all that overwhelm, all that confusion, kind of working through it and coming to terms with it and being like, I recognize this is how I feel. Um, I recognize that um, sometimes the waters get murky and that's okay because sometimes the, the waters get clear and I can see clearly again, right? So it's like... Um, I'm getting like stirring up like um again with the I'm sorry shit stirring uh 41 41 on the timestamp there so repeating numbers like um the stirring up of the the emotional gunk right at the bottom of your waters so it's like um it stirs up old feelings it stirs up uh things that were laid to rest so it could be somebody said something to you uh, uh completely completely not knowing that this was going to be some sort of trigger for you or you know they didn't know your past and they said something and you took it personally when actually when everything settles back down again when it all like floats back down when your waters are still like being able to see through the clear water and see things for what they actually were it feels like things are settling not quite sure why that page of air is still in the reverse there. I feel like it, you're you're recognizing that there was an emotional misunderstanding or an emotional miscommunication. What's going on in the action space? Patience, two of air, and the nine of air in reverse. Yeah, I, this has caused you some anxiety. This is really like um, whatever this thing was that happened in the past, because I'm. This is the center card, so it's telling me that it, it we're dealing with the past probably here, um, or nostalgia. Whatever this thing was that happened in the past, um, I really feel like it got you into um, a really bad headspace, right? It's those those feelings of like stress, uh, overthinking, overwhelm, um, anxiety, uh, all those kind of terrible things that that happen when you get in your own head, and yet it's like I want to say it's like you're free from that now because you've had some sort of sorry okay so um the uh the meditation sounds that i had on which were these deep water sounds have um has ended anything that happens in a reading is significant um and we've now got if i just turn it up a little bit you hear it it sounds like someone playing in shallower water it's it's mountain lake sounds so the message that's coming through that is like you're resurfacing right you've you've come back up air you know and you're you're in this crystalline you know like a mountain lake the waters are really really crystal and the sounds are like these playful sounds so going in doing that deep dive right going into that liminal space and coming back up all sp all like in sparkly clean playful waters it's like oh my goodness like I work my way through those deep feelings, I work my way through that confusion and I've come out and actually had this 
almost like an epiphany here and it's a really positive epiphany about something um yeah so it's almost as though um the confusion that came in with those fish right the confusion that came in with figuring out what was going on here it's like they've all turned into these birds now so again it's this energy of something becoming lighter um and almost more playful right um and then almost like you spreading your wings, you standing confidently uh, and coming back up out of that deep water. So again, this thing about buoyancy, right? Um, so there's nothing wrong with the deep water. It's it's just a process. And, uh, you know, playing in the sparkling, shiny water. Again, this is almost like the sparkly water, right? I'm really seeing like, you know, um, when you get those kind of crystalline waters in a mountain lake and like, like it's quite cold as well. And it's, but the sun's shining on the surface of the lake and it's all really sparkly. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, this is good. This is good. It's a good transformation, right? It's, it's a lightening of, of your energy. Um, <clears throat> so I think the patient's card coming through here is, um, it's again, it's a, it's a card of alchemy. It's a card of transformation. It's the temperance card. Normally it talks about taking fire energy and water energy, which is passions and emotions and mixing them and utilizing them and creating something new, right? Uh, finding some kind of balance between those things. And that's a process that takes time. But today it's coming through as this mixing of air and water, right? Thoughts and feelings and uh, communication and your feelings around that or action and your communications around that and kind of working through them, right? And taking the time that you need to do that. Again, she's looking back at the past. Again, we're just looking back at the past. So two of air is uh, conflicted thoughts. So again, two cards about um, swords and swords, which represent communication and thoughts um, and conflict, right? Uh, opposition conflict. But again, I feel like you're getting a new perspective on that. Uh, it's like um, one of these opinions or thoughts is actually higher than the other or one is being lifted higher than the other. I don't know. I may clarify a couple of these cards for you because I'm not 100% sure on all of them. Okay, can I get a clarifier on the two of air? Why is the two of air in that action space? Three of pentacles. Um, there's something that... There was some kind of block... It's like a blockage in collaborating with others. Uh, you can see she's on her own here, but the three of pentacles should be collaboration with other people. So it's like you had to do something alone because there was some sort of communication that was blocked. So it's like uh, you were meant to collaborate with others, but but you had to do something on your own. Like that, that was blocked from you. Why was it blocked? Yeah, I feel like, um, again, it's it's... The Knight of Cups is an emotional expression. So again, I feel like this is connected to what was expressed in the past. Somebody expressed something in the past. They did it with an open heart. It could have been you. It could have been them. Um, and it's almost like the shields were up, but the shields transparent. It talks to me about the Libra Diamond Heart, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, it's like you can see this person wears the heart on the sleeve. Right? They're, um, it's a Pisces card, by the way. Um, they wear the heart on the, the sleeve. They They are both vulnerable and defensive, but open and transparent at the same time, right? <clears throat> it's like really good Pisces energy because it's like um, expressing your emotions, expressing your feelings, but having that self-protection. So it's like being honest about what you feel, but also having enough self-protection to, um, to not be taken advantage of perhaps. So I feel like whatever happened, whatever this expression was, um, it caused some kind of conflict or misunderstanding uh, that stopped you from uh, collaborating or working together, perhaps with um, the person you were expressing feelings for or the who was expressing feelings for you, right? There was some kind of misunderstanding with that. But that's very, very positive. It's, it's kind of like the knight in shining armor energy for me. It's, it's one of my favorite cards. It's just a pure expression of feelings, right? And it can be somebody like running to the rescue as well, like uh, coming in to help. Um, again, it could have been taken the wrong way. Somebody could have seen you in distress or you could have seen someone else in distress. <clears throat> you know, asked, you know, are you okay? Uh, is there anything I can do? You know, you extended your your big generous heart water signs to this person and they thought you were trying to chat them up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to cough, so I'm just going to pause and drink some water. Oh, sorry, I'm not quite not quite out of it but talking about uh pisces running in like the heroes right running in to check everybody's okay i just i was coughing and i was having a little bit of a coughing fit and i coughed quite hard and my son who's off school today because he 
the cat died yesterday he, right? he's a pisces he needs a day off <laughs> leave him alone um he um he just shouted from his bedroom he was like are you okay so it's like my little pisces like my little hero coming in in his little white steed to check that that his mum's okay <laughs> it's just so sweet um so yeah very pisces energy Okay, I just want to check as well, like that Queen of Water is like an, a maturing of emotions. So can I get uh, where the knight's a bit juvenile? So this is like a baby, this is a child. And then you have the knight that's kind of like the teenager and the queen and the king who are like mature. Um, it doesn't necessarily indicate age. It's talking about emotional maturity or maturity in whatever suit of cards that, that comes from. Tell me about the Queen of Water, Page of Swords again, yeah. So... Um, I feel like because some time has passed, because you have more information or this person has more information, they've gathered information, they've, um, I don't know, learned how to speak another language or they've looked up what that word meant or they've um, by chance run into um, other examples like other scenarios uh from other sort you know like um something happens and you don't understand what's happening and then you watch something in the media and you go oh that's what that situation was you know you watch a tv show and you think oh my goodness that what that's what just played out for me and now i understand that other person's perspective because i i couldn't see that at the time it's that kind of thing so somehow you've got some more information um, which I think has brought you into a more mature energy where you're more comfortable with your feelings about something. Again, it's processing because this is in your thoughts. This is thoughts. Uh, it's like you've got information about something that you felt. Uh, but why is the page of Aaron reverse, please? Four of Cups. Because there's that Fool again. You've got a lot of Aries energy. I keep seeing the Fool. Um, it's this leap of faith. Sorry, my um, I'm getting messages. Um, so this feels like the miscommunication or the lack of communication could be, if it's miscommunication, I feel like what was miscommunicated was that somebody's not interested because the Four of Cups is... Um, I've been disappointed by past relationships. I've been disappointed by past friendships. Uh, you know, the, the interactions I've had with people in the past has caused me to want to not be around people for a while. It's like, I'm going to just go and do my own thing. So it's an opting out energy. It's like, it's a no thank you card. Um, but the problem is the th the fourth cup is a um, it's the it's the ace of cups which is unconditional love. So it does have this feeling of like missing out, missing out on opportunities, missing out on relationships, missing out on a good time because you're sulking about stuff that happened in the past. Um, and with the page of air, it's like. It could be you missed out on something because something wasn't communicated, right? You didn't get the party invite. It could be that you thought somebody was rejecting you when they actually were interested, right? Uh, it has this kind of come hither energy to it. So it always tells me it's this person wants, the, wants to be chased, right? They don't want to make the offer. They want the person to make the offer to them. It's like... Um, I'm not interested, but I'm going to lie here seductively and, and you know, gaze into your eyes, <laughs> you know, it's like, come and get me energy. So um, <clears throat> maybe this person expected you to reach out to them and you didn't, or maybe you expected this person to reach out to you and they didn't, there was a misunderstanding. <coughs> I'm so sorry about the coffee. I think I might have to pause again. Yeah, so finally, it could be that somebody didn't communicate something or they misunderstood because they were in this kind of sulking energy. It's taking your ball in energy, right? Um, having a big old sulk. Uh, why is the Nine of Air in reverse? I think we know. I think that's because there's clarity over something that was confusing and causing anxiety. Yeah, time has passed. Uh, taking it easy, taking it slowly, same energy. Um, and the water here is pouring onto this lotus flower. Um, the lovely thing about this card is it's somebody who's warming up after they've been frozen for some, for some time. It's almost like she'd she turned into a statue or she was in this cocoon energy, right? But it's like she's, she's starting to thaw, she's starting to warm up. Again, it could be, there's a similarity here with this card. So it's like, you know, the, the light coming in, the light dawning, the 
the realization energy and or hearing hearing the I don't know, hearing the voice of spirit or the universe and, and receiving the information that's been downloaded, right? Uh, but it's this warming up energy. So yeah, I think warming up after potentially even being blocked or ghosted. Now this could this card can indicate somebody has um, muted you on Twitter or uh, blocked you on Facebook, right? So it could be uh, if you've had a falling out with somebody and you've blocked each other, um, things are thawing out between you. I think people are starting to see things from each other's uh, perspective, which is nice. Okay. Um, I might just, mm, what do I want to do? I don't know. How do I want to do this? Because I'm going to get you advice for each slide now. Let's see. Let's see what comes out. So can I get advice, please? Can I get advice, please, for ca the Cancerians watching this? So each situation is going to be different. It's a very general reading. So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Uh, but I think generally what's happening is there's been some misunderstanding. You're looking back on this, um, getting some clarification on it, understanding from that other person's point of view, which is actually relieving some stress or anxiety that you had about that. And it's com it's helping you to... Uh, come into a place where you've calmed your you've calmed your waters right uh, things have settled uh, so generally that's the general message for everybody but let's get some personal advice please personal advice for cancerians uh full moon in capricorn the end of a tough cycle approaches um, i'll go into more detail but let's just get all the cards out first can i get some advice please I'm sorry, my phone tried to install an update. I don't know why we're up to. Um, advice for advice for uh, Cancerians, the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. I'm going to get more information, so I'm just pulling the cards at this time. A time for healing for Scorpio's balsamic moon. And what else, please, for Pisces? Advice for Pisces. You've got full moon in Pisces. I am picking up on so much Aries energy because that full card keeps coming out I feel like my son's in this reading a little bit because uh, my son is Pisces but he's got a huge amount of um, Aries in his chart and it makes him very um his emotions are very fiery uh, he really he feels what he feels and he feels it strongly and vocally and intensely um in the moment it's like a flash of emotion um because of all that aries and, and pisces energy so i feel like there's also somebody who has a lot of aries in the chart uh just picking up on it really really strongly from the beginning it could be the emperor energy because this is aries taurus um so pisces bring love into the situation new moon in aquarius a fiery climax approaches full moon in aries and uh, meditate and contemplate new moon in pisces Okay, good advice. Again, we'll go into it a little bit more in a minute. <clears throat> I also want to get, um, let's just bob these away actually, uh, just in case they want to come back out for the signs. Can I get um, clarification on the advice or some more advice please for cancer? Some more advice please for cancer. Seven of cups, there's that confusion again. So that's that same energy. Um, so you've got the end of a tough cycle approaches. So if you've been through a cycle where you've been feeling very, very emo emotionally confused or overwhelmed, um, that is approaching an end. And I feel like the end's going to be quite practical with it being Capricorn energy. Scorpio, what's going on for Scorpio, please? Advice for Scorpio. Strength card. Yeah, heal from whatever you need to heal from and um, help to heal others as well i feel like there's a message here with the strength card about um scorpio because you're very very emotionally in tune right almost like psychic with your emotions and the emotions of others i really feel like you can apply that the lessons that you've learned emotionally i feel like could be really beneficial to the people around you so if somebody's go also going through something that you're going through or that you've been through i feel like you could build strength with that person because it's like uh, a problem shared is a problem halved, right? Um, that kind of energy of like, uh, if you go, th if you're going through it together, um, you can you can kind of have each other's back through this. If that applies to you, for others of you, it's just um, healing and processing whatever's happened to you, uh, and kind of rebuilding your strength and rebuilding your confidence. Uh, Pisces, quite a lot going on over here, Pisces, for you. 
uh, bring love into the situation, a final, fiery climax approaches and meditate and contemplate. And you've got the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel, Pisces, I feel like you're aware of a change or an ending in your life. I feel like you know that something has run its course. Um, I feel like you could be anticipating that the... I, this, I keep getting this like death throes energy, uh, like the death throes of, of whatever the situation is could actually be quite dramatic and fiery, but I feel like it will be, I feel like whatever this is, the more slowly you take it, the, the more gently you do it, the more you show love and compassion for everybody involved in this situation, uh, the more you keep your heart open and the more you stay grounded through things like meditation and yoga, breathing techniques, whatever it is that you need to do, uh, you know, quiet time, um, the more you meditate, contemplate, move slowly with, with love as the focus, the easier this will be. It's like take time. But I do feel like you are the one that knows you have to end something, uh, probably because there's a lot of conflict or it, that feels like irre irreconcilable differences. Um, if you're not ending something, it's it's processing something that ended. It doesn't have to be immediate. It could be something from a long time ago. All right, uh, let's read some of these cards. I've lost the Tarot Del Nui box. <laughs> there it is. Uh, what are we on? I don't know what time we're on because the, the video cut out. But <sighs> Cancerians, um, the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. How hard are you willing to work for what you want? This card is reminding you that effort is required. Work issues may be about to come to a head when this card comes up. If you are wondering if you if you sh if you should stay in your job or leave, so again, this is for Cancerians. The um, this card can be a strong sign to make an exit. The end of a rough time is forecast. This card also asks you to consider how ambitious you are and whether you're prepared to pull out all the stops to make your professional dreams come true without being ruthless. With a love question, this card can be called a call to face reality. Whatever situation you're asking about, make a plan. Making a plan will help. If your personal life is troubled, prioritize it more. Additional meanings for this card. Oh, a tr so what is you're being asked to do is release control and trust the universe. Additional meanings for this card. A professional project may be ending now. Admit it if you've been overly hard-headed or hard-nosed. Uh, find a balance between your personal and private lives. And it's time to stop fearing the worst. Okay, Seven of Cups. So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Again, it's a, it's not a personal reading, it's a general reading. So some things are going to fit and some things aren't. We've got complicated birth charts with complicated people. It's not going to be the same exact story for everybody. Uh, dreaming at the Moon. I have so many dreams, so many wishes. I pray at the moon for them to come true. Sometimes reality frightens me. Sometimes I fear everything I long for is unreachable. That it's only an illusion dissolving into the nightly wind. It's hard for me to see what choice is the best to be made and what path is the right for me to follow. It's also hard for you to see clearly what is real and what is it also hard for you to see clearly what is real and what is not. Do you have, like I do, too many options and too many dreams? Then come and sit beside me. Maybe together we can avoid the temptation of daydreaming and we can find a way to force the visions of our imagination into reality. So Cancer, there's a strong message coming through here that you may have some kind of dream in mind or you may feel a little bit like you have different dreams, you have different options, you have choices, but you're not quite sure which is the best choice to make. So I think what you're doing is procrastinating a little bit. You're daydreaming, you're pro procrastinating. Again, take it if it resonates, leave it. If it doesn't, it's a bit of a half, harsh message, but it is what it is. So if you've uh, sat there fantasizing about what could be, um, I think there's a call to action here. I think you've been called to... Uh, it's that thing about like you don't really know how something's going to turn out until you actually do it so it's just like pick you know if you can't decide maybe flip a coin or really don't listen to the opinions of others and really choose what's right for you um but you think you are being called to at least start exploring your options so for example say you're like oh i'd love to go to university and do a university course but i don't know what to do right you don't have to apply for a university right now what you can do is 
Google universities, look at the campus, go and go and tour the campuses, you know, look at a few different ones. You might find one that you think, I did definitely don't want to go here. You know, you can cross it off your list. Uh, you might find one that feels really comforting and like it's just right for you, where, which might help you make up your mind. Uh, look at the prospectuses of those universities. Um, you know, do does each university offer the courses that you like when you actually read the de details of the courses that you're interested in does it still match up with what you were thinking it was going to be so um it's like explore your options do the research right do the research explore your options look into things a little bit but do start taking action because if you just sat there daydreaming it nothing's going to happen you have to actually put some hard work and effort into it if you want that if you want any of those dreams to come tr true <laughs> sorry cancer that was a harsh one I felt like I was talking to myself a bit there because, yeah, same. <laughs> like, yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Oh, picking my university courses was a mission. I was like, what if I pick the wrong one? And, like, I can't decide. I, re I really struggled. My last module, I could either have done another Shakespeare course. I'd already done a 60 credit sh Shakespeare course for a year um, where I looked at something like 10, 12 Shakespeare plays. Um and they'd changed the course so it was the same it was a replacement course for the one that I'd done in the time that I was at uni um and I did have the option I was able to do it again um because it was actually like 12 different plays right it was like completely different plays to the ones that I'd studied so I could have done another I could have done two 60 credit courses in Shakespeare which I would have loved to have done uh but I was like well I already have all the skills right I already have the skills that that course would have taught me um I'm just applying it to different plays um, where I could have the other option that I had was to do um, because I'm all I'm humanity so I'm all about storytelling and uh, um, humans and culture and what they kind of do um, so my other course that was an option was um, a 60 credit course in um, classical Latin so part of it was learning classical Latin and part of it was studying classical te text in translation so again, talking about, um, you know, at the beginning where I was talking about the history and, and culture sharing between England and Italy, um, a lot of the texts that we have, a lot of the historical texts we have are all in translation from classical Latin um, or written in classical Latin or modern Latin or early modern Latin, right? But there's a, it's interesting to see how we know what we know because of texts in translation and it's a whole thing, right? It's a whole thing. It sounds weird but it's what I was interested in. So uh, text in translation, text throughout history and the development of them from kind of um, classical times to early modern period was really, really interesting to me. <sighs> I don't know why I'm being so long-winded on this. Um, so yeah, my other course was do I learn classical Latin? And I was like, well, that's actually, rather than just taking the skills that I already had and applying them to just doing the same course again but with different texts which would have been really easy right right it would have been an easy a uh, easy a um just making me think of that film i was like no i'm not afraid of a challenge <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna learn classical latin even though i'm terrible with languages um and i really enjoyed it and i'm really glad i did it because i picked up a new skill and i got a first in that module uh so uh yeah but either way either way i think it would have worked out fine I don't know why I went into that long-winded story, but it could have some meaning for somebody, a time for healing, especially because it kind of brought up that English, uh, English-Italian link again, balsamic moon, a time for healing. So Scorpios, wake up Scorpios, I'm, I'm up to you now, I've stopped waffling onto, it's too easy to talk to Cancerians, they just get you to spill everything, it's like before you know it, you've just told somebody your life history, if <laughs> they've got cancer placements. Um, pulling this card suggests that the past is in the past and a bright future is beckoning Scorpios. However, before you take your next step, be sure that you both be sure that both you and the situa situation feel healed. This is not the time to paper over any cracks or to simply pretend that everything is okay. Rather, you still need a little bit more time to heal and to soothe both yourself and anyone in need. Then remind yourself that um, anything is possible if you believe it. This is also a time to surrender and wait to hear guidance from the universe. Powerful insights can be had if you know that somebody or something really isn't good for you. This card is a reminder to surrender. Start to work on your belief in your dreams so that you're ready when the time comes. 
Uh, it can be hard for Scorpios to let go, to in emotionally detach from things. Whether it was a good relationship or a bad relationship, Scorpio energy is like, that is my thing. That's mine. It's very possessive. So I'm not saying that you are possessive. Again, it depends on your full chart. Uh, but Scorpio energy by itself is emotionally possessive in its dark form. So just be wary of that, right? You want to let things go so that you can open up to things that are positive, especially if those old attachments were toxic. Uh, when, attuned to the moon. When one is healed, all are healed. Again, I have that, said that. It's like you can heal others. Additional meanings. It's time to let go of the past. You are about to turn the corner. You need more time to heal. Think about how the situation would look if everybody was healed. Okay, strength. Tame the beast within. The lion beside me represents my beast within. Do you want to know how I tamed this wild cat? Not with rage, violence or hate. Instead, with patience, you had all that patience energy down here. With patience, compassion, forgiveness and love. This is the soft way. That, that is really high vibrational Scorpio energy. That is the soft way I choose to approach everything. That is how I created a safe environment in my life. My message to you today is that you can do the same. You can use peace to tame inner or outer beasts. The strength you need is already within you. You have the power to overcome any obstacle and let your confidence grow. Conquer your fears, control your impulses, do not act irrationally. That's what he said, right? I was like, no knee-jerk reactions. Patience, listen. If you need to, you can say, I'm feeling particularly triggered by what you just said. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go and process what you've told me and I'm going to come back with a response. Okay, you can say, I'll get back to you later. You don't have to give people an immediate reaction if you're feeling particularly, uh, you know, triggered by whatever has been said. Um, break all negative energies, quiet them, find more peace, fight any doubt you may have. Any way, this way, you will be stronger in the end, always. All right. So to my Cancerian and Scorpio placements, if you want to leave the video here, I hope you have a brilliant time and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. Uh, those of you who are sticking around for the Pis Pisces placements, I just wanted to give uh, the other people the opportunity to be like, yeah, that's the reading done. Uh, just because you've got so many cards, Pisces, I don't want to have anyone sticking around uh, when all I'm going to do is read Pisces' as cards, right? So uh, I didn't want people thinking, oh, she's going to pull more cards after us. No, that's that's it, okay? It's just Pisces' as cards and then I'm going to wrap up the video. But I do want to read all three for you and take the time to do that even though it's probably going to make me start coughing. Uh, a little bit of feeling sorry for myself there. Sorry. A little bit of uh, martyr energy coming in. Okay. Pisces, my little fish babies, I love you. Let's go. Aquarius is all about progressing, pro progress and modernity. So this is the time to move forwards. The new moon, I think you are embracing that change, Pisces, whatever that is for you. The new moon in Aquarius card means no looking back. Change is on its way and it could come quickly. Whether you get the change, which is interesting because you've got a slow patient card down here. Um, whenever you get, whenever you, sorry, whether you get the change you want um, depends both on whether you believe you can have it and how much you're relying on others to bring it to you. That was kind of that four of cups energy that was up there. Um, this card comes with the suggestion that you may need to do things independently and on your own, but be loving, not too pragmatic. Time may be of the essence when this card comes up. Aquarius energy has an electric feel to it. Certainly there is a sense that you need to let go of the past and move forwards towards your future as soon as possible. Attune to the moon. Explore the idea that it's not what you know, but whom you know. Additional meanings for this card. You need to be more detached from this situation. Thinking outside the box will bring the solution. More pragmatism is called for. Improve your karma by doing some charitable work. Okay, a fiery climax approaches. Full moon in Aries. That, as a Libra, because Aries is my, my uh, opposing sign, that scares me. I'm like, Aries, no. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. Full moon in Aries. It's time to see if you've been a little bit too much me, me, me. There's a tug of war going on between what you want and what someone else wants. Ugh, Empress and Emperor energy. But you'll have to wait a little while to see what's going to happen next. As you wait, which is this energy again, you've got this thing about like wanting to rush forward or wanting to move quickly or things feeling like they're moving quickly and the need to be patient and tolerant and 
take the time. It's like this weird opposing energy that you've got coming through. Um, but you'll have to wait a little while to see what's going to happen next. As you wait, ask yourself if you've been handling the situation as sensitively as you could have done. If you know deep down that you've been a little rash or harsh, gone too fast or overstepped the mark, then accept that on some level you've created this situation yourself. Sorry, Pisces, it's what the book says, which means you can create your way out of it too. Ah, if you've created the situation, you can get out of it, right? You just unpick the threads. I don't know. <laughs> simple right um i don't know good luck you've got this i've got i've got faith in you when this card comes up it's a a peak is coming and it could be fiery attune to the moon be nice be kind smile and be polite as you navigate to where you want to be that's so funny it's so funny <laughs> it's like um I can, I can just see my friend smile in my head. Um, hi, if you're watching still. Uh, be ass being assertive is good, but don't ride roughshod over anyone. If you're in a tense situation, meditate your way to peace. Don't be a baby. Sorry, this could be the issue. You need to have more fun. Ouch. Uh, right, meditate and contemplate. Again, take it as it resonates. Leave it if it doesn't, uh, Pisces. This could be somebody that you're dealing with. It could also be uh, maybe there's a lot, a lot of Pisces in here and you've all got different advice cards. So just take intuitively what you know is for you. New moon in Pisces. This card speaks of dreams and romance, of soulmates and poetry. So Pisces. It suggests there's a new start coming your way that's connected to a matter that leaves you feeling somewhere between having your head in the clouds and being in a totally altered state. There could be confusion and disappointment if that's what you've had before and that's what you're expecting. However, you're onto a good thing. If you're onto a good thing, then wish hard because the words of your soul and your heart could help bring about the manifestation of your dreams. Just remember Cancer's advice though that you have to actually take action they can't just sit there dreaming they have to actually put in some practical effort if all that sounds a little wet and watery then that's pisces for you sorry pisces why are they being so mean today in these these books this is the last uh, sign of the zodiac and the, the new moon in pisces can suggest a last ditched chance to make your dreams come true attune to the moon use your feelings to guide your way logic won't work right now uh, additional meanings for this card, face your fears, they may be holding you back. The situation is being healed. It is time to surrender to the, to the divine. Chant Om Naro Narayani, maybe Google that, I don't know. Um, avoid being deceptive or willingly deceived. Willingly deceived. Mm. It's funny because you're asked to be nice when maybe you're not feeling like you want to be nice and you're also being asked to not deceive. So there's a little, some conflicting advice coming through here. Again, I feel like you just have to trust your emotions, right? Trust the way that you feel and use that to guide you. Uh, and that doesn't mean, you know, shouting and screaming or anything like that. It's just being emotionally aware of your own feelings and your own needs and accepting them and embracing them and working with that, right? Uh, in a slow, uh, sensible way. Let's consider it of others. Okay, Knight of Pentacles then. <clears throat> Truth is my flag. Rigorous methods are my tools to succeed. I know what I must do and I do it no matter what. Is this your case too? I do hope so. When a task is to be accomplished, then accomplished it must be. And in the most perfect way possible. Very Virgo energy, by the way. Um, even if it requires hard work and total commitment. I expect you to be reliable, trustworthy, uh, perse perseverant and meticulous. Do not complain that the mission is too exhausting. I don't want to hear a word of this kind. You've chosen me, so now my message to you is stick to your goal with truth and honour and you will reach it victoriously. No fancy ever. Everything must be carefully planned. Now let's ride with our banner floating proudly in the air. I don't know how you feel about that. I do not work well with perfectionist energy because um, I'm very aware of my own... I'm, you know, like, I'm 40 this year. I'm very aware of my own... Uh, energetic needs, emotional needs. Uh, I overthink things, so I need a lot of time and space to allow my brain to think, overthink and process. Um, you know, and I need a lot of freedom. And I've got a huge amount of Gemini and Sagittarius in my chart, which means I am going to make so many mistakes, right? It's just who I am as a person. I'm a clumsy, disorganized person. It's 
it's in my chart. I can be, I can be organized, but if I'm organized in one area and uh, too focused in one area, all the other areas will fall apart because I'm not, I'm not queen of pentacles, right? I can't juggle that many responsibilities in a practical sense. I'm all air. I'm all air and fire. I can't, like, I need to just dream and be creative and run around a field, right? That's my energy. And it's just the way it is. So if you have a little bit of perfectionism in your chart, just be wary that you're not holding people to the same ideals that you expect from yourself because everybody's different, right? Uh, it's, it's a little bit military. Uh, it's a little bit... Um, my way or the highway uh, i wouldn't work well with that energy i'd be like yeah you go you make everything perfect i'm gonna go and paint this wall and make it pretty <laughs> right it's like or um it's quite critical as well so it can be um i'm very good at pointing out what could be improved <laughs> not necessarily so good at attending to the small details myself i don't know there's something in that for for you to to have a think about i think um and i hope this reading was helpful for you i just see i'm starting to daydream already i'm like a child who's like you know like um how they say that you can only focus on things for a certain amount of time before your mind starts to wander and i'm like that kid in the classroom and it's like 10 minutes till dinner time or 10 minutes till home time and they're just like i can't focus anymore i need to go and do something else i need to go and do roly polies on the grass <laughs> it's, i feel like that so i don't know if this is you dealing with your kids it's like you have to get your homework perfect on that note actually um my daughter's maths homework that the teachers like the, the app that they use now they have to get 100% right before their homework is considered complete. So um, if they don't understand it, it's like they have to, they're expected to keep trying, keep trying. Um, and it's quite a clever app. So it'll change the, it'll change the question. It'll still be like the same basic maths behind it, but it'll change the question. It'll change the numbers. Um, there's a thing that you can click on to that shows you how to do a similar problem and it's like it'll they'll it'll make them do it over and over and over again until they understand it which if you are quite a fast learner if you pick things up quite well uh that's going to be fine right um you know it's actually in some ways it's a really good maths tool and i was looking at that and thinking i wish i'd had that program when i was at school because like I would have learned so well using that program, but for others, and I think definitely children with, um, you know, I worked with children with special educational needs that I'm like, that would be torture for them because it would take them hours. Uh, they may not even have the capacity to understand what's being asked of them, um, you know, ever, <laughs> uh, you know, that may be beyond their limits, in which case punishing them by saying you've not done your homework when they could have put considerable amount of effort into that homework more effort than somebody who'd aced it right somebody who found it easy and just did it in 10 minutes they didn't put that much effort in the kid who has the learning difficulty who is doing their absolute best to get that 100 percent but just like neurologically cannot do it uh they could have spent hours on that and it's so torturous and so cruel um so I don't know. I don't. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I feel like there's something about that uh, for somebody there. You do get a lot of stuff about kids, Pisces. I've noticed, uh, and teaching children and adapting uh, what you're teaching children from what you were taught. So again, take the messages that resonate. Leave any that don't. I'm gonna go and wander off and roll around the field. <laughs> Uh, I hope you have fun playing on the park and I will see you again soon. Do take care of yourselves, water signs. Bye-bye.